heart of this message also deals with the idea of uh, putting death to YOLO, the death of YOLO. How many of you have ever heard that term, you only live once, YOLO? And I believe that many of us have been lied to with the idea of, listen, you need to live it up. You need to take advantage of the time because you only live once. Thank you. And we want you to know that that is a lie from the pit of hell. We don't only live once. The Bible clearly teaches us that there's a life after this life. There's a life that we can live eternally with Christ Jesus. Come on, how many of you believe that tonight? Popular culture will tell us, listen, you need to do what feels good. You need to do what feels right. You need to get you some. Get you some. YOLO, get you. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, get you some. That is the message and the idea that the world is trying to teach us through popular culture. But we want you to know tonight that YOLO is a lie. The Bible says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. We have the opportunity to choose life or to choose death, to choose heaven or to choose hell. And we are encouraging you tonight to put to death YOLO because YOLO is a lie and it does not exist. Once we die, we die a physical death, but there is a spiritual life that we have. We're either going to spend it eternally with Christ Jesus or we're going to spend it in hell. And our plan and our desire is to encourage you to boycott hell, to bankrupt hell, and to choose Jesus Christ because he is the only way, the truth, and the life is found in Jesus. You don't only live once. Life is not short. We shouldn't live it up. The Bible clearly shows us that we must give an account to the actions and the way of life that you and I live. It's not die and game over. Life is not a game. Life is a journey. And where one journey ends, another journey begins when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. One of the tricks that the enemy will try to tell us about YOLO is this. It's a fairy tale. Hell is not real. The devil is not real. It's right up there with the tooth fairy. It's right up there with Santa Claus. If you believe in hell, you're just like the person that believes in the Easter bunny or a pot of gold or a genie in the bottle. The enemy will try to tell us believing in hell is juvenile. It's childish. But I'm here to tell you that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And hell was never created for you and me. Hell was created for the rebellious angels and his followers of Satan. But God created so that you and I would be able to live with him forever on the streets of gold. God desires to have you in his presence for all eternity. Tonight we want to talk to you about putting to death YOLO. We are going to have a funeral service, and we're going to bury this ideology of live for the day, live for now. Forget about, forget about consequences. Forget about what everybody else thinks. Do what feels good. YOLO was birthed out of the same ideology of Burger King. Let me explain this. Burger King has a slogan called, have it your way. Get you some, translation, get you some, get you a double meat, get you a double cheese, get you, get you a big fry, get you whatever you want to get. Now, I'm not simply talking about fast food, but I'm talking about a fast life. If you have a life that is dedicated towards just pleasing yourself, the Bible clearly shows us that is a life of destruction, it's a life of pain, it's a life of discouragement, and ultimately it is a life of emptiness. YOLO is a lie. We don't only live once. We continue to live after this life. Maybe you're like me. I grew up being a procrastinator. Any procrastinators in the house? Anybody would be honest and say, yes, I, I always thought I had more time. Especially when it came to cleaning up. I remember being really young and my mom wanting me to clean the house. Anybody grew up with chores, 
responsibilities around the house. And just like any normal kid, I just wanted to flop on the couch, play video games, and watch TV all day. And anything else from that was a distraction, somebody, was a distraction. And so my mom would give me a list of chores. I want you to make your bed. I want you to wash the clothes. I want you to take out the trash. She would say, and I'll be like, yeah, mom, I got it. I'm on it. I'm on it. And with my mouth, I was telling her what I was going to do, but my actions said something else. And sometimes our relationship with God is that way. God has given us instructions to maintain a clean and pure life. And we hear him and we respond with our mouths, but our actions are telling him something else. So my mom would then give me a time limit. I'm going to leave. I'm going to the store. I'm going to be back in a short while. And when I get back. Anybody remember that speech? When I get back, this whole place better be cleaned up. Yeah, I'm on it. Mom, I'm on it. Laying on the couch, throwing popcorn in my face. Putting my feet on the couch when she leaves because I'm not allowed to put my feet on the couch. I continue to watch TV and out of nowhere... Time flies by. I hear the car coming into the driveway. Has that ever happened? Dude, like a bottle rocket, I am scrambling. I am washing the dishes. I'm washing the dishes. I'm making the bed. I'm throwing clothes under the car. I'm making my dog eat my shoes. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to clean up the place. And no matter how hard I work, no matter how fast I work, I get busted. Has that ever happened to anybody? Your mom busts you doing something that should have been done a long time ago. No matter how quickly I responded at the last moment, it was too late. That is our relationship with God. Those that have a YOLO life say, I I have more time. Serving God is for old people. Serving God is those old people that eat at Luby's. They go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. I'm young. I have a lot of life to live. I'm not getting married. I'm just going to mess around with as many girls as I pop. I'm going to get me some. And I'm not talking about Domino's pizza. Thinking I had more time, my mom came at a time and an hour that I did not expect her, although I I knew she was coming. Jesus has warned us in his word that he is coming. And if we think we have more time, if we think this is a YOLO life, he's going to come at a time when we are not prepared. Not prepared to meet him. Tonight, I want to challenge you through God's word that the lifestyle of YOLO must be put to death. It must be destroyed, although it's popular thinking tonight. I'm going to challenge you with the reasons why YOLO needs to die. Turn to your neighbor tell him, you got to kill YOLO. You got to kill YOLO. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 24 is where our main text will be at tonight. I want to offer you three reasons why we need to kill YOLO. These are my three reasons, and then I'll be speaking about them. Number one, unannounced, God is coming back. Number two, the reason that we must kill YOLO is because reckless living wrecks. And number three, not everyone will make it YOLO. The Bible teaches us in Matthew 24... Beginning with verse 36, this is what the word of God says. But now about that day or hour, no one, somebody say no one. Say it again, say it loud, no one. No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. As it is written, or as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. Point number one. Unannounced, God is coming back at a time and an hour that we do not expect him. No one, the Bible says, no one is able to predict. Not the angels, not the sun. There's been a lot of people that have tried to predict the time when Jesus was coming back. You guys remember the the Y2K scare? 
the Y2K, everybody was buying up all the raviolis. Everybody was buying all the ramen noodles. Because they thought the world was going to end. The Aztecs had it figured out. Oh, man, the Aztecs, the Mayans. Oh, man, the Chinese. Everybody had it figured out. Listen to me. Nobody knows when he's coming, but we know that he is coming, and he's coming unannounced. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you better be ready. You better be ready. Have you ever had somebody pick you up and you weren't ready? Have you ever had somebody pick you up and you were ready? And, and they're waiting for you. You're like, oh, man, five minutes, five minutes. And you got the toothbrush in your mouth. <laughs> five minutes, five minutes. And you're trying to iron your clothes while your clothes are on you and stuff like this. Five minutes. Girls, you're poking your eyeballs with that eyeliner. You're just trying to get it all, get it all up in there. You're just slapping that stuff. I mean, just foundation. You look like Casper the ghost because you are not ready. Jesus is not going to wait for you and me to be ready. He says, be ready now. Today is the day of salvation. <laughs> be ready. Tell your neighbor. Tell him right now. Be ready. He's coming back. Listen, we don't know when he's coming, but we know, we don't know when, but we know he is coming. John 14, verses 1 through 3 says this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I not have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back. I will Come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. I am coming back. Jesus clearly told his disciples, listen to me. I'm leaving you, but I am coming back. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to forsake you. He says, I'm leaving you another counselor like me, the Holy Spirit, so that he will be with you and give you peace, direction, power, authority. So when I come back, you are ready and you are able to withstand the darts, the fiery darts of the enemy. He is preparing us to be with him. He's preparing us. Why do we have to kill YOLO tonight? We have to kill YOLO because unannounced, Jesus is coming back. We must live in a way that is ready for God's return. If we live like tomorrow doesn't matter, our present actions won't either. There's a promise. It's going to happen. Thinking that it will not happen will not stop him from coming back. Not believing that Jesus is coming back will not stop Jesus from coming back. For those history buffs, maybe you'll appreciate this. In 1960, the presidential campaign was taking place where John F. Kennedy closed many of his speeches with a very famous story. Perhaps you may remember it, reading from history books. Colonial Davenport was the speaker of the House of Connecticut. He was one of the representatives. On May 19th, 1780, the sky at Harford grew very black and dark. To the dismay of people, they thought that the world was ending. They thought at that moment, the world would cease to exist. The Day of Judgment Many people thought this was the response from Mr. Davenport. The day of judgment is either approaching or it is not. If it is not, there is no need to adjourn our meetings. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. Therefore, bring candles and let us continue business as usual. This is the point. He's either coming back or he's not coming back. And if he's coming back, I want him to find me doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Being where I'm supposed to be and being faithful to the task that God has given me. 
Bring the candles. I'm not going to stop with my responsibilities. No matter what comes against you, no matter what people say, no matter how much they criticize you, no matter if they call you a fanatic, no matter if they disbelieve your convictions or your standards, it does not change the fact that one day Jesus is coming back for you and me and YOLO does not exist. That's weird. That's weird for people to think that there is a life after this life, but the reality is that there is. We must put to death YOLO because unannounced God is coming. Number two, the reason we must put to death YOLO is because reckless living wrecks. The Bible clearly shows us in verse 38, which is where I get to the point of this second aspect for in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. They lived recklessly because they thought they had more time. The Bible says they had no idea that the flood was coming, though they saw Noah day by day, a wood by wood, tree by tree, building an ark that caused people to ridicule him. Day by day, people walk by you and say, this is ridiculous, this is weird, this is a waste of time. They're taking your money, going to churches for lazy people and for weak-minded individuals, but there will be a day where a flood comes and it's not water, it's not rain, it's the wrath of God and Yola will not be able to save us. Money will not be able to save us. It is only the mercy, the grace of Jesus. YOLO's got to die. You cannot live just for today. You cannot spend without thinking about tomorrow. You cannot take clothes off without thinking of the consequences. Joseph told Potiphar's wife, how can I sin against God? He was thinking more about the present sexual opportunity to get him some. He was thinking about his relationship with God and how he would damage it. And how he would wound the favor that God had upon his life even though he was a slave. Bad things may be happening to you. You may not be where you want to be. Stay faithful. Stay committed. Galatians says do not grow weary in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. In the end God wins. YOLO will not win. God wins in the end. The second reason we must put YOLO to death is because reckless living wrecks. People were eating and drinking. They were living without regard for the next life. They were living their present moment without regard for their future, and that's a trap. There is another life after this. It's not a fairy tale. It's not mystic wishing. It is real. The Bible says that they were marrying and being given in marriage. They were starting a new life, yet they were losing their eternal life. They were getting married, thinking they were starting something new. Where in reality, it was the beginning of death. Because the flood was coming and Noah and those that were righteous were in the boat. You may be starting something new in a relationship. You may be starting something new in education. You may be starting something new in a career. You may be starting new in life. But if you started without Jesus, you are outside of the protection of God. You are outside of the boat. And least you know, YOLO will not be able to save us. Somebody turn to your neighbor, tell him, Jesus is your life jacket. I can't save you. You can't save the person next to you. Look at them. No matter how fine they are, you can't save them.
God is coming in the same way at a time when others are not looking for him. Second Peter chapter 3 Verse 3 says this, above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. Scoffing is those, is another word for those that are, that are, are making fun of, that are agitating. Scoffers are those that come and, and they poke at you and they ridicule you. The Bible says scoffers will come and continue in their evil ways. Listen to this. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it had since the beginning of creation. Has people ever told you that? Man, I've been hearing all my life Jesus is coming. I've been hearing all my life, God is coming back, God is coming back. I've been hearing all my life, I've been scared into being saved with all these movies about Jesus. And, and I don't want to take the X, and I don't want to take the 6, and I want to eat bread, and oh, I don't want to die. I don't want my head to roll off. We've been scared into and believing that Jesus is coming back. Where is Jesus? Why hasn't he come back? I don't have the answer to that. I just know that I know that I know he's coming. And when we don't expect him, that is where people will be incredibly regretful. People will mock. People will ridicule. People will make fun of you. They'll consider you weird because you believe in a heaven and a hell. We must be willing to live the truth regardless of how other people view us or accept us. And the idea here is not just to save ourselves. The idea is to save as many people as we possibly can from the wrath that is coming. Jesus is the way. People need to know that Jesus is, good deeds is not the way. Jesus is the way. Money is not the way. Jesus is the way. Coming to church is not the way. Memorizing scriptures but not having the word in us and living and abiding in us. That is not the way. Only a surrendered life to Jesus will save us. Reckless living wrecks. Lastly, the reason that we need to put YOLO to death is not only because unannounced God is coming back, not only because reckless living wrecks, but lastly, the reason that we must put YOLO to death is because not everyone will make it. Verse 40, where I receive this point from, says, two men will be in the field one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with their hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know at what day your Lord will come. One will be taken and one will be left. Not everyone will make it. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you going? Will you be taken? Some will choose Christ. Others will reject him. Don't let it happen to you. Verse 40 clearly says people are doing ordinary things. And in a moment's time, things will change. What causes? What causes some people to be taken? And what causes some people to be left? Why would that happen? Why would God choose to take one person and yet the very next person, that person stays? I submit to you that the Bible teaches that those that are in Christ will be taken in the air to glory. He will separate the sheep and he will separate the goats. The sheep meaning believer. The goats meaning those that are rebellious and sinful. God is a God that loves and, and desires to have relationship with you and me. But that we must make a choice. We must make a choice. 
not everyone will be taken. Knowing about him does not qualify as having a relationship with him. Anybody like the X-Men? Anybody enjoy X, uh, or not, or how about Iron Man 3? Did anybody like Iron Man 3? So I have a picture here of Iron Man 3. Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man. The Iron Man. I have a picture of the Iron Man on my phone. Do you get it? He's on my phone, not your phone, on my phone. I have a picture of him. Check this out. Because I have a picture of him on my phone does not mean that I know him personally. Does not mean he knows me. I know about him. I know what he's done. I have information about his background. But that does not mean I know him. Just because we come to church, just because we know about God, because we sang a song, because we read a story, and you have a Bible, does not mean the God of the Bible is somebody that you know personally. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Just because we come to church, just because we know scripture, just because we sing a song, because we play an instrument, because we do things in church, does not mean we are going to heaven. Do you know him? We heard earlier, who is this king of glory? Who is he? Do you know about him? Or do you know him? Turn to your neighbor and ask him, do you know him? As the keyboard player comes, not everyone will make it. Keep watch, the word of God says. Keep watch because he's coming back. Verse 42, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come? You don't know. Be alert. Don't get distracted. Wait with anticipation. In high school, whenever I tried to do something that my friends were doing that was not godly, Growing up in a Christian home, my mom would always ask me or tell me before I left, be sure to honor God. Where you go, be sure to honor God. He's watching you. And the more she told me God was watching me, the more upset I got. What do you mean he's watching me? Psh, psh, psh. What do you mean he's watching me? And I tried to sin. I mean, I tried to sin. I tried to drink it. I tried. I tried to smoke it. I didn't get buzzed. I have never been drunk. I've never been stoned. I've tried and it couldn't happen. Because I could only hear my mom. He's watching you. He might come back tonight. Where are you going to be if he comes back? Where are you going to be at when he comes back? And that was in my mind, haunting me. I could see my mom telling me, he's coming back. Where are you? What are you doing? My mom was a living epistle. I'm here to tell you tonight, he's coming back. And not everyone is going to make it. Not everyone is going to, not because I say it, but because the Bible clearly shows us. 1 Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, 
we who still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The only ones that can be encouraged are those that are living in a way that will, that will be taken with the Lord. Tonight, this is an opportunity to ensure that you are ready. This may be weird for some, but he's coming back. Do you know him? Are you ready? Tonight, we put to death YOLO. You only live once is a lie. It does not exist. God is coming back for his people, and we will live again in either heaven or hell. We must make a choice today. I close with this. There was a little boy sitting at the kitchen table intently focused on the drawing that he had been working on for quite some time. His mother noticing how focused, how quiet, how diligently he worked, responded to him and said, Stevie, what are you doing? Without even looking up, barely acknowledging his mother, he said, I am drawing a picture of God without even looking at her. She chuckled a little bit. Oh, Stevie, no one knows what he looks like. Quickly he responds without even looking up. He says, well, now they will. Why do I bring that story to your knowledge? I bring that story to your knowledge by saying this. When others see the masterpiece of what God has drawn your life to be, when others see how God has orchestrated and how you have lived and how he has fashioned and formed every part, every connecting dot of your life, they will be able to tell that God is alive and God is well and that he exists because of the way you live and the way you carry and the way he operates in your life. They'll know that he's alive. They'll know that he's alive. So today I challenge you to put to death YOLO, to stop living for today. Ensure that you have access to heaven. Tonight, you're going to be given an opportunity to make a choice. There's going to be two altar calls. If you've never accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, you've been living for yourself, and you want to reject living for you to in turn live for Jesus, we're going to pray for you. If you're a backslidden Christian, at one point in your life, you were on fire for God. At one point in your life, you were serving the Lord, but somehow you got caught up in the YOLO lifestyle. You got caught up living for you. You, you abandon convictions. You abandon the, the voice of God to be able to follow your own heart's desire, your own wants. And tonight you want to get it right. Tonight you want to put to death YOLO. And you want to live for Jesus. The second altar call is this. If you know someone that is living a YOLO lifestyle and you want to intercede and pray for them that God would break that grip, that God would break that chain, that God would break that ideology from their mind and that their eyes would be unveiled to see the trick, the deception that the enemy is placing upon this generation. We're going to intercede for them. Stand with me tonight. Tonight is the most important night of your life because tonight we kill something. We kill every deed, every thought, everything that says, please me, please me, do whatever you want. 
live for now. We put it to death. And we choose the life that Jesus offers versus the temporary joy that the world has to offer. I'm going to invite Pastor Nino. Lisette, would you please come? My wife, Diana. Our leaders, would you guys please come? Pastor Nelson, come. We want to pray for you. Because we believe that God is a forgiver. God is a restorer. He's not a spiritual cop trying to bust you. He's a cop trying to, he, he's not even a cop. He's, he, he's somebody trying to love you, trying to provide warning and access into his kingdom. I'd like for you to do this with us tonight. We're finishing on time. But let's give some room to the Lord to move in the lives of those around us. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here tonight and you would be honest before God. And you would say, my life has been lived for myself. I've been living to please me. I haven't been living to please God. And tonight, I want to fix that. I want to change that. I want to live for the Lord. If that's you, quickly raise your hand right now and put it down. Quickly. Yeah, yeah. Quickly. Anybody else? Quickly. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Do it now. Do it now. If you're here tonight and you would say, you know what, at one point, I was really, really on fire for God. At one point, my standards for living were very high. I lived with anticipation, fervor, fire for God. I've got caught up. I've let down. Maybe you're not a sinner, but you're, you don't have that same fervency that you had before. And slowly you're slipping into that culture of YOLO. And you want to get it right tonight. If that's you, quickly raise your hand right now. Put it down quickly. Quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. In those first two calls, there were several of us. I'm going to invite you to take a bold step. We want to pray for you. We want to pray that God would empower you, strengthen you to be able to live for him. Not to impress the people around you. Because the people around us cannot save us. Only Jesus can. And so he knows already what we've done and what we're doing and what we've said. And he wants to love us, embrace us. We want to pray for you. If you raise your hand or you should have raised your hand. Step out of your seat right now. We want to pray for you. Come. Come right now. Come right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Several, several. Come. I'm making that decision. I'm making that choice. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to get this thing right. I'm going to be committed. Our leaders are going to begin to pray for you right now. Our leaders are going to lay hands and begin to pray for you. If you're here tonight and you would say, I know people that are living this YOLO lifestyle. They're lost. They've been lied to. They've been deceived. Their life is a mess, and they don't even see it. They, don't, they, they, they can't see the destruction, the destructive lifestyle that they're living in. I want to pray for them that, they, that the enemy's grip of YOLO upon their life would be broken. If that's you, I want to invite you to come right now. We're going to intercede for them. We're going to intercede for a generation that needs to experience the freedom and the breakthrough that only Jesus can give them. And that this grip of YOLO would be loosened once and for all over this generation.